The central dogma of biology is that DNA makes RNA, which makes protein. Since the 1970s, heterologous protein expression has been achieved using recombinant DNA technology. Identification of the promoter region of DNA where RNA polymerase binds in order to transcribe DNA into RNA was a critical step in understanding this process. Another important discovery was the identification of the operator region of DNA where proteins that regulate gene expression bind. These discoveries led to the development of systems that can incorporate promoters, operators, and associated DNA elements into a circular piece of DNA called a plasmid to drive protein expression. Plasmids can be replicated by the cell's native DNA polymerases and are easily isolated from or transformed into E. coli. While there are many types of promoters, the three used most commonly for protein expression in E. coli are the LAC, ERA, and TRIP promoters. Some of these promoters rely on additional short DNA sequences known as operators to regulate transcription. In addition to the promoter region, other DNA elements are required to maintain the plasma within the cell. These include an origin of replication where DNA polymerase can bind to replicate the plasmid and an antibiotic resistance gene used to select for cells that contain the plasmid. Other antibiotic-free selectable markers also can be used but are less common. One of the most widely used expression systems relies on an RNA polymerase from the T7 bacteriophage. This viral polymerase only binds to its associated T7 promoter. By inserting the T7 promoter into a plasmid and producing many copies of the T7 RNA polymerase, researchers are able to generate lots of RNA encoding the target protein of interest. The gene for T7 RNA polymerase itself is encoded in the genome of certain E. coli strains and is controlled by a LAC promoter. The LAC repressor protein LAC-I binds an operator sequence just downstream of this promoter. This prevents transcription of the T7 RNA polymerase gene, thereby preventing production of the target protein encoded on the plasmid. This inhibition of transcription is regulated by allolactose, a derivative of the milk sugar lactose, which when present causes a conformational change in the LAC-I protein. As a result of this conformational change, LAC-I protein detaches from the LAC operator sequence. This results in derepression of the LAC promoter, thereby allowing production of the T7 RNA polymerase. The T7 RNA polymerase then binds to the T7 promoter in the plasmid and allows for production of RNA encoding the target protein. Because allolactose is hydrolyzed by the beta-galactosidase enzyme, protein expression is relatively short-lived. In the laboratory setting, a chemical similar to allolactose, isopropyl beta-D1 thiogalactopyranoside, or IPTG, is used in the place of allolactose. Because IPTG is not hydrolyzed by beta-galactosidase, it reliably allows protein expression to proceed when added to E. coli cultures. The ERA promoter in the rabinose operon is regulated by a dimer of ERA-C proteins that bind to the I1 and O2 elements upstream of the gene to be expressed. This causes a loop to form in DNA which prevents protein expression. Transcription can occur only after rabinose is added to the system. A rabinose serves as the inducer for this system. Binding of arabinus to the end domains of each of the ERA-C proteins causes the dimer to release from the O2 element and bind I2. This allows RNA polymerase to bind to the promoter and protein expression to proceed. The ERA promoter is often used because it is more tightly controlled than the LAC promoter. For the TRIP promoter, tryptophan acts as a repressor of the system when it binds to a TRIP repressor protein. Binding of the combination of tryptophan to the trip repressor protein to the operator region prevents RNA polymerase from binding to the promoter region. Consequently, protein expression cannot take place. 
Protein expression only occurs after all of the tryptophan has been metabolized by E. coli. When this occurs, the trip repressor protein dissociates from the operator region and protein expression proceeds. Each protein to be expressed must be treated differently as they have characteristics that prevent the same conditions from working optimally for all of them. Consequently, it is common for changes to be made in the culture conditions in order to maximize protein expression for a given construct. There are a wide range of conditions that can affect protein expression. Examples of these include the host strain, media the cells are grown in, inducer concentration, and temperature at which the bacterial culture is maintained after the inducer has been added. We will be discussing how to evaluate different conditions in later videos, but for now it is important to understand that a large number of experiments may be necessary to find the best conditions for expression of a particular protein. Thank you.